Hi there. My name is Colin Knapp, and I am the senior pastor of Pilgrim Congregational Church. Today, you are joining us for worship on the first Sunday after Epiphany. Epiphany is a season, not just a day. And today, I am so glad that you have decided to join us in worship. Pilgrim is a place of peace. It's a place where we gather together to ask questions and to worship God and to put our faith into action. And it's a place where everyone, and I mean that, everyone is welcome. Thanks for being here.
Good morning. Welcome to Pilgrim Online Worship Service this first Sunday after Epiphany, January 10th, 2021. My name is Joycelyn Fowler, and it is my honor to be your liturgist this Sunday morning. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So Lord, we cry out for your help to obey all your ways. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's be in an attitude of prayer as I do the opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, be with us today and every day. Lord, deliver us from a place of hopelessness. Help us to remember that you're not a God of division and hate, but a God of love and justice. Call us out of our complacency and routines. Lord, fill us with your spirit of love and peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now let's join in the opening hymn, Arise, Your Light is Come. Brothers and sisters, Jesus became like us in every respect so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. As we confess our sins, we come before one who was also tested by what he suffered, confident that he is able to help us. Please join me now in our confession. Merciful God, in great love, you have claimed us as your children. We confess that we have not loved you as we should. We have not participated fully in your purposes and plans. We grow weary and give up when the way is hard. We have not loved our brothers and sisters as you intend. Complacent in the presence of injustice and violence, we fail to recognize our own complicity. Forgive us, especially when we fail to protect children so vulnerable and precious in your sight. Forgive our misuse of power against people and against your creation. Help us to praise you by living in harmony and peace. Do not be ashamed of us, we pray but strengthen us in our time of testing. Set us free from fear that we may wholly trust in you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who shared our flesh and blood. 
Amen. Hear now the good news, my friend. Children of God, it is clear that Jesus Christ came to help sinners. He is our savior in all our distress, and it is his presence that saves us. Declare with me the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning, pilgrims. Wishing you a wonderful start to this new year, and may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of God be with you. Sending the peace of Christ and the joy of the new year to all of our friends at Pilgrim. May the peace of Christ renew you this day. And in the words of the United Church of Christ statement of faith, God promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, God's presence in trial and rejoicing, and courage in the struggle for justice and peace. Amen. Good morning, Pilgrim family. In this new year of 2021, I wish you peace, joy, and love. Hello, Pilgrim family. Missing you all. Hope to see you soon. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace to all our Pilgrim family. family. Happy Epiphany. Peace be with you from the Pilgrim staff. May the love of Christ be with you. This morning Old Testament reading is from Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Pilgrim family. So the last couple weeks, we've been talking about a lot of moments in Jesus's life. First, we had Christmas and the birth of Jesus. And then we talked to the next week about Jesus being brought by his mother, Mary and Joseph, to see Simeon and Anna in the church. And this last week, we reenacted ourselves the coming of the kings to see the baby Jesus with our Epiphany Illumination Parade sights and sounds. Thanks to so many of you for coming out and participating in that joyous event. Well, now this week we're going to talk about another important event in Jesus' life, his baptism. Many of you at home, I'm sure, were baptized as a baby or maybe as a different age in between or as an adult. I myself was baptized when I was 12 years old. You might have been sprinkled with some water up at the baptismal font or immersed in a tub for baptism or maybe even in a river or a lake like Jesus is baptized in our story today in the River Jordan. But no matter what age you were baptized, you or your family were making a promise that you will be on the journey with God all during your life. So now today I want to talk about a certain part of the baptismal story of Jesus today. 
It has to do with John the Baptist, and we'll learn a little bit more about him in our Connect lesson after this, so I hope you'll join me. So the special words we're going to focus on from our scripture today are the words that God says to Jesus as he comes up out of the water after John has baptized him. And they are, you are my son, the one I love. I am very pleased with you. Well, those are powerful words, aren't they? Well, let's imagine this is you. And someone says to you, I love you. I am very pleased with you. Those are pumping up words, aren't they? Those make us feel really good about ourselves. How about you've done a really special project for either in your home or at school and someone says, that is awesome. That is the most wonderful thing I've seen. Well, that's pumping up powerful words, aren't they? But what if someone says that same project that you worked very hard on, you know, what do you think of it? And you, they say, mm, it's okay. That doesn't make you feel as good, doesn't it? Or you meet some people at school and they say, have you met Maureen over there? She's kind of weird. Doesn't make you feel so good, does it? Our words can be very powerful. We can be built up by what someone says to us, and we also can be deflated like the balloon. And we can do the same to others by the way that we speak to each other. Do we pump people up with our words or do we deflate them? I don't know, think about it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But we have to think about how powerful our words can be to someone. God is always there to fill us up with good and loving and encouraging words. Is God always happy at everything we do? No, but God follows us and journeys with us and pumps us up and lets us know how much we are loved and are his child. Let us pray. Dear God, Help us to be ones who pump each other up, who are the light in the world, who tell each other how special and wonderful and spectacular we are. Because those are the things that pump not only us up, but each other. And we are spreading the word that God loves us and cares for us to one another. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. What's in a word? What role do words play in our lives? The question may sound overtly philosophical, like an exercise of those privileged to live in the ivory tower. It may seem that such a question has no bearing, no meaning on how we actually live our lives and therefore utterly inconsequential. 
But I think today we must re-examine such a question in light of where we find ourselves as a country. For this week, we stood at the very cliff's edge of democracy, peered into the utterly dark chasm below, the end of which we could not see. We did so because we are in the midst of an existential crisis that has been brewing for at least three decades, as long as I've been alive, if not since the beginning of the postmodern movement itself in which we find ourselves. Such a movement, such a moment, when any notion can mean, well, anything, and the only guiding principle is to question everything, when every idea must be put in quotes and all narratives are held in suspicion, when the truth becomes terribly passé, when, when we have new phrases enter our lexicon, such as alternative facts and new political movements based on little more than conspiracy theories and fear-mongering, when we witness the United States Congress and a violent gang of Trump-supporting domestic terrorists attempt to usurp not only the words but the actions associated with those words of 81 million citizens as they exercise their constitutional rights as citizens of this nation, well, when all of those things occur, we find ourselves in this grand gut check moment, an inflection point. The Constitution, as you hopefully know, is a document that contains words. It says something. What that something is has always been debatable, that is true, but in retrospect we seemed to be able to agree that it said something, something important, something that might guide our lives as citizens of a democratic republic, at least in theory. And so we have to answer the question, what's in a word? As a person of Christian faith, I have to tell you that our tradition, our narrative, has a lot to say about this. We would do well to remember some key things today if we seek to break free from our bankrupt notion that has led us, at least in part, to this tragic state of affairs in which we find ourselves. Our Old Testament reading is, of course, very well known. It is the beginning of the narrative itself. And in the beginning, we have a formless void that was the earth. We have darkness that covers over the deep waters. In other words, in the literary context, we have chaos. But that's not all we have. We also have the Spirit of God, the very breath of God. We have a God who speaks, let there be light. And there was light, verse 3 says. The creation story reveals a profound congruence between God's voice and God's identity. Our God is a creating God who speaks order into chaos, light into darkness, a God who takes a hot mess of nothing and matter and dust and makes it into something beyond beautiful. When all of the signs of order and peace in our lives have been torn to shreds, when chaos erupts and we find ourselves watching it live on TV in shock and horror, when a brick is thrown through a window of a storefront, when all we have left is darkness and despair, God speaks a creative new work into our lives. God's power to create something from nothing is beyond our control. And because it is beyond our control, we learn to be a people of hope. 
God's word in creation matters. God speaks and everything changes. Now, I want to be clear. I am not a Christian who takes the creation story literally. But I am a Christian who takes the creation story seriously. And I would invite you to do the same because by it, we are given a narrative that says words matter. Words create new realities. Words have power. They shape new beginnings and bring order out of chaos and hope out of despair. Now, our second reading from the Gospel of Mark on the baptism of Jesus, you might notice there is a lot of overlap there thematically. And in case you're following the liturgical calendar today, today is the day that we celebrate and remember the baptism of Jesus. And on a personal side note, you might also remember that one year ago today, even though in a pandemic it feels like it was 12 years ago today, I gave my candidating sermon on the baptism of Jesus from Matthew's gospel. Right over there. Do you remember that? Now, Mark's telling is a little different from Matthew's. His telling moves really fast. John the Baptist shows up on the scene from where we do not know, preaching a baptism of repentance. And just as God has made order out of chaos, John is in the wilderness, a land beyond control of the powers that be, offering a baptism for the forgiveness of sin. It is a grand do-over. John, in this way, not only looks back towards Israel's past, but also looks to the future, towards a new covenant. This baptism is a new creation. It is to usher in a new way of being in relationship with God. He comes as God's prophet to offer hope about the future. But as much as the story starts with John, the focus is really on Jesus and this proclamation from God. That's where my eyes always find themselves wandering to. Once again, we hear God speaking. The climax is when we learn that Jesus is declared to be God's son. Not only a child, but a beloved child. Not only a beloved child, but a divine child. Karl Barth said this story summarizes the entire gospel. The astonishing claim that God does not will to remain hidden in the heights of heaven, but descends to the depths of earthly life in order to be seen and heard by us finite creatures. I love that quote. Jesus' ministry is about the kingdom of God being revealed right in front of us in ways that we can hear and see. We must be careful to listen to these words and it begins with these divine words to Jesus. You are my beloved. God's words to Jesus matter. Today, Jesus speaks a word to us. Jesus says to us, I'm with you. I'm with you. This past week, I found myself struggling to fall asleep, tossing and turning. Normally, when my head hits the pillow, it's about 15 seconds before I fall asleep. Not this night. It was one of those nights when my failures of the past were on replay. I'm sure many of you know what that's like. It is a seemingly desolate place to be. And because this doesn't happen to me very often, I, I found myself just tossing and turning, tossing and turning for a good 30 to 40 minutes, it seemed like. 
Finally, I realized that my tossing and turning wasn't getting me anywhere. I laid on my back and I began to pray. And it, to be honest, in my prayer, I was having a bit of a pity party about some of my perceived past mistakes and failures. I tend to be pretty hard on myself. But then, in my prayer, I heard the voice of Jesus say to me, I'm with you. I'm with you. As if to say, I'm with you. What else matters? I'm with you. Nothing else matters. And suddenly, my pity party ended. Little voices of regret and anxiety silenced. The world may tell you that you're a second-class citizen because of the color of your skin or because you don't have a fancy degree. We were reminded, again, this week publicly that there are those in Oak Park who believe such things and will use violence to make their reprehensible opinions known. The words were written on a brick, flung through a window of a small business. Those words will not define us. Those are not the words that matter because we've already received a different word. God says, you are my beloved and I'm with you. The world may tell you that you can't love this person, that how you feel and what you do are wrong. You should stop it. Stones are thrown, wounds occur. You might find yourself in a place of real pain. In the midst of all that, Jesus says, I'm with you. Maybe you're haunted by your past, by words you wish you had never spoken, by actions you wish you could take back, by what ifs and why did I do that. The anxiety of what happened may still haunt you. My sisters and brothers, you are more than your worst mistake. You are more than a string of bad days. You are more than the sum total of cruel and hateful remarks from those you thought were your family and friends and allies. You are beloved. You are forgiven. You are called. And you may be broken. You may not know where to go next, but you belong to this place. You belong to one another. You are not alone. alone. You are the body of Christ. You belong to God, and Jesus is with you. These words matter. And because these words matter, we come to know that other words matter too. There is, in fact, such a thing as truth. Our lives are not hopelessly meaningless. We exist for a reason. We are not merely created to just purchase things. There is such a thing as science and public health and election security. There are fundamental truths and we are called to be people of truth. In this epiphany season, we are charged to bring light into darkness. We are charged to tell the truth of our messianic story, of this discovery of who God is in the world and in our lives. We have a story to tell a hope to share, a love to offer. These words matter. God's words matter. So today, we remember them. We are new creation. We are beloved. And God is with us. In the name of the triune God, amen.
invite you to join me now in prayer. You are welcome to share your prayer joys and concerns online during the service in the chat, remembering that those will be viewable by the public. Alternatively, you can submit prayers privately through our website or contact a deacon for healing prayer by phone. Please pray with me. God most high, God with us, we praise you with every word we speak and with every moment we fall silent. You hear our prayer and sustain us along with all living things. You are a God who leads us, who makes a way when there is no way. We give you thanks, O Lord, for you are stronger than every foe. We give you thanks for your creative spirit is always at work, making all things new. We give you thanks for though we feel scattered or on edge, there is no place we can go beyond the reach of your love. And so we are bold to lift our voices to you to admit our need. We pray this day for your church in this community, in this nation, and in the world. We ask your blessing on your body that we may in turn be a blessing to others. We ask for your guidance, strong and sure, for we are not certain of the way forward or what the future holds. We pray for the gift of discernment and the courage to act, to resist the temptation to be bystanders when our neighbors are in need, to risk being uncomfortable in holding others and ourselves accountable for the choices we make. We pray this day for our country's leaders that they too may have the gifts of discernment and courage. Give them wisdom to seek the good of all, not only some. Give them compassion and imagination and love for all of your creation. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear the hard truths of this present moment and hands ready to serve. We pray this day for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, and for the doctors and nurses and all who care for them. We ask a special blessing on those dear to us who are suffering. May your healing presence surround and fill them. May your comfort enfold them. God, we are beyond weary of COVID-19. The isolation, the fear and anxiety, the restrictions and inconveniences, and the grief. Help us to hang on and not lose hope. Prevent us from becoming overwhelmed and numb to the seemingly unstoppable rising death toll. Renew our energy to follow the precautions that we know work to stop the spread of this disease. Having confidence that in you all things are possible, help us to do our part to bring an end to this pandemic. We pray this day for your people near and far who live each day with fear. Whether they fear someone in their home or violence in the streets or the government or themselves. Bring peace, O oh God. Peace founded on justice. Peace grounded in truth, the prerequisite for reconciliation. We pray this day for all those who find the news too much to bear, which to be honest, Lord, these days that includes many of us. 
The start of a new year always brings new hopes, but this year in particular, God, many of us were really anxious to leave 2020 behind, looking forward with great anticipation. It's still early, but so far the news in 2021 has been challenging to digest and process. There have been some wonderful surprises, but as a nation, we are also experiencing previously unimaginable levels of chaos and uncertainty. You are a God who makes a way where there is no way, who creates paths in the desert and through the storm. You carry our burdens and lift our spirits so that we may bravely persist and grow into the people that the world needs us to be, that you know we can be. Lead and guide us to go forward into your future with faith, hope, and love. We pray these and all things in the name of the one who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, Jesus the Christ. Joining together now to pray in community the prayer he taught us, each in the words most meaningful to us as individuals. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a time in our service that we offer to God a portion of what God has given us. You're invited to give to Pilgrim Congregational Church using any of these methods. Online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org select Give In from the menu, or click the Give to Pilgrim button. Via the Tidely app, download it from your phone's app store. Text the word GIVE to 833-721-1098, or you can mail in a check. At this time, we ask that you give generously as you are able. We'd like to invite you to join us, please, in singing the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. We will sing verses 1 and 4.
God, as we offer our treasures and our hearts to you, may they be used to pass on the promise of your hope, peace, life, and community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. Amen. I have several announcements for you as we prepare to begin a new week. This evening, Cleo Hagan and Pastor Colin will begin leading a five-week Zoom discussion series called Who is My Neighbor? What the Bible Says About Refugees. Registration is required to participate so that they can send you the study guide, and the registration link is on the website and the What's Happening at Pilgrim email. Community Renewal Society's virtual Martin Luther King Day celebration is Monday, January 18th, starting at 10 a.m. It includes a virtual panel discussion and film screening of Brother Outsider, focusing on Bayard Rustin. He was an unsung hero of the civil rights struggle, mentor to Martin Luther King Jr., and architect of the March on Washington. He was not acknowledged as a leader during this time because he was an openly gay black man. The link to register for this event can be found now on the Community Renewal website or on the Pilgrim website. Next Sunday, we will also be celebrating MLK Day here at Pilgrim. Please join us at 9 a.m. via Zoom for a special adult enrichment class led by our own Dr. David Brodnack Sr. They call me a saint, engaging with Dr. King's legacy and creating a new one in our divided world. And then at 10 a.m., join us as we welcome Reverend Damon Smith, congregational organizer from the Community Renewal Society as our guest preacher. Links to participate in both of these events are on our website. The Ministry of Christian Ed invites you to give us your feedback to help us in determining the programming for the rest of this program year. There's a link to a brief survey on the What's Happening at Pilgrim email. We value your input, so even if you've not participated in any of the programs yet this year, please take a moment to fill out the survey. Please also plan to attend our annual business meeting, our all-church business meeting, via Zoom on Saturday, January 23rd from 9 to 11 a.m., this is an important meeting where we will discuss our future plans for the Pilgrim Church, the nursery school, and the budget. The information packet will be emailed to you later this week. The Zoom link to join the meeting is available on our website. And you are also invited, encouraged, uh, and frankly, strongly encouraged to send us your 2021 Passing of the Peace videos. Please send them to Delena, and we look forward to seeing you each Sunday. Lastly, we continue to gather on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. for a brief service of evening prayer. It's a lovely time to engage with God and one another. The Zoom link is available on our website. And now, please join me in singing our closing hymn.
My sisters and brothers, receive this benediction. You are new creation. You are beloved. Let those words sink down into the deepest part of who you are this day. God is with you. So go, live with courage, live with peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.